Hello guys. Today's going to be a very special video. Today I am going to the refugee camps of Bangladesh where the Myanmar refugees are coming in. So we're going to jump in an auto rickshaw or a CNG and we're going to take a ride out to the refugee camps and hopefully be able to get an interview with one of the refugees. But We'll see what happens. I'm just gonna basically tell you very briefly what is going on with the refugees. And I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments saying that I'm wrong or this or that, but I'm covering it very briefly. So you need to do your own research. And this video is not about the situation. It's just about showing the people in the current environment. So basically in Myanmar, the military are trying to drive out Muslims. Myanmar is mostly a Buddhist country. But they're trying to drive out the Muslims. And there's been some terrible things going on. Mass because they're slaughtering a lot of the Muslims. And so all the Muslims have come to Bangladesh to find refuge because Bangladesh is a Muslim country. That's all I'm gonna say, it's very brief. Please do your own research and we are going to go now. This is gonna be different to any other video I've done. Let's go and see what it's like. Hello. So we're just arriving in the refugee camp now. Hello. Alright guys, so we've just arrived at the refugee camp. There's a lot of kids here. Uh, you can see we drove past the longest beach in the world on the way and then you can see all the rice paddies and everything. It was pretty incredible. And now the kids are just gathering around me, just very interested in me. But they seem like very happy and they speak a little bit of English, so it's very nice. Very good first impressions. There's a UNICEF tent over here, which is pretty cool. We're just going to try and organise everything with the rickshaw driver. And then we're going to head hopefully into the, the camp itself. Guys, this camp is huge. I'm going to show you a few shots, just the first glimpse. It's as far as I can see the camp. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> it's a lot more developed than I expected. Lots of infrastructure in place. You know, there's little food stalls and things, and there's lots of charity work. Hello. 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 <laughs> 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 As you can see, it's very real here. It's quite emotional seeing the kids like that, you know? Like, what did they do to deserve that? To just be like, ripped out of their home because of a religion. The thing is though, is like, they're very happy, but I just wonder how they'll, their lives will play out, you know, being put in this situation. Look at this view that I'm looking at. So I just bumped into a man who works for the World Food Programme and he spoke a bit of English. I didn't 
to record it because it was just kind of happened. He approached me and asked me if I was a journalist and I said not really. He didn't mind, he was just interested. Then he explained to me that he's been working here for three months distributing food to the refugees. Incredible. It just seemed like kind of everyday life for him and I guess that's what this is, is everyday life. So it's so amazing like to come here and just see everybody just living, getting on with their lives, doing everything as usual, you know. It's, it's not like anything desperate. Like one may think a refugee camp may be a very desperate place and I'm sure some of them are. But this one in particular where I am right now, it seems like it's very established. People have been living here for a long time and it's just life, you know? This is everyday life. see a, a refugee laughing like that. What's in your hand? Sugar. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. I think what's in that kid's hand is glucose, obviously from the World Food Program. Excuse me sir, is this uh, gl glucose? Porcelain. 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 Okay. Salen. 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 <laughs> We've just come across a little school, Avro Child Learning Centre. So. Bye bye! They're so happy and welcoming. You really cannot understand the magnitude of this place. It's ginormous. Everybody's so happy that I've said that before, but it's just something that's really resonating with me, you know? I wasn't expecting this place to be as developed as it is. You know, it's, it's just like a little, it's like a city. It's, it's basically a city. Everybody's living a normal life, normal life. And just take a look at this. Okay guys, so I'm just going to climb up this thing and get a good aerial view. So I've climbed up here and it's really sketchy. I'm trying to hold my bag. There's a guy up here. And then... Good view there. This place is enormous. I'm going to head down now. This is pretty dodgy. We're looking for someone from Myanmar, a refugee, to interview. That guy was uh, from Bangladesh and he was a teacher. Um, he said if we go over on this side, then we might find someone from Myanmar that speaks English. Uh, the people on this side are more the new refugees. So this is kind of like the new area. 
of the refugee camp. We will go over to the side and see if we can find someone to interview because I think that would be fascinating. So we filmed an interview just then with a man. I'm going to upload that as a separate video, but the interview was no words. I'll show you a few clips of it now so you can get kind of an idea. Okay, uh, guys, so I'm just going to interview Saloon. 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 And, and they burned their uh, home by gunpowder gun and then they burned their... So they, they come into the village and they rape the women and they kill the men and then they throw the young children in the air and then they... I really appreciate it and uh, very good luck for you and uh, your family. So as you can see it's absolutely beyond words. That'll be, uh, that'll be the next video. Right in front of me, I, ha I can see the line for the food. Everybody's lining up to get their rations of the food, so have a look at this. So the line starts way down there, all the way up there to get your food. So it's hard, but the man I interviewed was called Salim. He mentioned that they're very happy and grateful towards the help that has been distributed here uh, and they're doing a really good job considering in this refugee camp are 500,000 residents and considering that they're doing a very good job of distributing food evenly and fairly to everyone. Obviously there are small problems but 500,000 people I think a lot of them arrived in a three week period. Anyway, uh, we'll move on now. <laughs> okay guys, so I just bumped into a friend here. Is it Ani? Ani? Yeah, my name is Ani. Uh -huh. I'm a student. You're a student. Uh, honors first year, political science department, Papua right. Government University College. Nice. And this is my part-time job. I'm a volunteer, as a volunteer. And you're helping prevent AIDS? HIV, HIV AIDS, yeah. sanitation, education, and sanitation. nutrition. Nutrition. The laws, their style, and we use ours okay. to find their style. Right. Keep up the good work, man. Thanks. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Okay, guys. So now we're going to jump back in this uh, tuk tuk here. Good. How are you? Good. How are you? We're gonna jump back in the tuk-tuk and head, head back to Cox Bazaar. I gotta be careful. How are you? How are you? Good, how are you? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. How are you? Yeah. How are you? Good, how are you? 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 Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. 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 I didn't bye. meet with you. Bye. I didn't do it. Bye. 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 Alright guys, we were just on the way back, but we've come to a point where all the, the brand new refugees are arriving from Myanmar. All the refugees here have basically just arrived, maybe in the last few days. I'm not 100% sure how long they've been here, but these are the ones that haven't been registered yet for food or anything like that. They're just waiting to be registered so they can go into the camp and like set up homes, you know, get on with their new life, I guess. But they're all waiting here. I'm not going to put the camera in their face or anything. I'll give you a quick glance because uh, they've obviously just come through hell to uh, be here. So. Yeah, I'm just going give, to give you a quick glance and then uh, we will move on. So we just found out from a, a local man that these people have been sitting here for a week 
waiting to get registered and until you're registered you do not get any food so the other Rohingya people and that's what these refugees are called Rohingya people the Rohingya refugees that are established have been bringing their rations and helping out these other people as well as some local Bangladeshi people it's beautiful to see people come together like this. A very desperate situation, obviously, but by the looks of things, it'll soon be sorted out. Obviously, refugees coming every day, but uh, the system is very well organized from what I've seen. So yeah, as you can see, they don't look the same as the people who have been settled into the camp, which I think is kind of a good thing because it, it's a look into the life to come for them. They have a, a safe haven Thanks to the ba uh, Bangladeshi government. Uh, Bangladeshi government are doing amazing things here as well as obviously UNICEF and World Food Programs and other non-profit organizations. So it's uh, beautiful to see and um, hopefully these people will move on to a more positive life than everything they've been here. Here's uh, the World Food Program. I'm not in affiliation with UNICEF uh, or the World Food Program, but I'm gonna leave links below this video uh, so you can sign up uh, if you want to and you can donate uh, because I've seen them, they're here, I've seen it in person, they're helping out big time, everybody's grateful so if you want to help out these people, links below for UNICEF and World Food Program so if you have something to give then I can see that it's going to good use. Gonna jump in the tuk-tuk now and head back to the city. Bye! Okay guys, so we have just arrived uh, at the beach, uh, absolutely amazing sunset behind me and I just want to end the video here, uh, I don't, yeah, incredible day, lots of happy moments and obviously lots of sad moments, seeing the kids, seeing the kids happiness and seeing the adults happiness was really a, a lesson, there's no better lesson than that, to be grateful for what you have and how privileged I am for my background and my country's situation. Very fortunate to come from where we come from. You know, you see this stuff on the news and you don't think another thing of it really. You know, you know it's it's terrible, but you don't take that next level in terms of emotions and it actually impacting you that much. Well, that's how I see it personally. You, maybe you're different. When you actually see that in, in real life, it, it really knocks you back big time, as you can, I'm sure you can imagine. And, and maybe you've experienced something the same. I'm going to put up the video, the interview. I'm going to put up that interview in the next video. As soon as I upload it, it'll be linked below this video. But that interview was really something. I've never been that close to something so real. I'm going to leave links, like I mentioned before, I'm going to leave links to UNICEF and World Food Program uh, if you want to donate or anything like that. They'll be linked below. You know, these companies get a lot of criticism for corruption and things, which I'm sure there's an element of that. But from what we saw, the people living in the, the camps were very happy and they were really seemed to be making a positive impact. Thank you so much for watching. See you later. You don't make sense. Said I will find it all down again. You don't like me around your friends. Bye guys! Bye bye! bye. bye. Bye.